Hello, welcome or welcome back. I'd like to thank the people that watched my video on painting tulips. I uh, had a goal of 50 people and I got about 150, so I'm a happy girl. Um, today, we're going to paint um, a street scene, a little, a little village in Giganda, France. And um, I've already drawn it, transferred it to my watercolor paper. The most asked question I had was how do I transfer it to the paper? What I do is I first plan my drawing and once I've got what I like, I use a Sharpie marker to get it, get the lines and the things placed where I want it. I take my watercolor paper and I tape the drawing to the back of the paper. And I take my paper and pencil. I go over to the window and I can see through the 140 pound paper using the window as a light box. And it seems to work real well. I do a lot less erasing on my page and that keeps the paper fresh. Um, okay, so drawing and planning your painting can take longer than it actually takes to paint the painting. Um, especially if you're on a quarter sheet, a smaller painting doesn't take that long, but the planning and drawing is very important. This is one of the lessons I teach in my beginning watercolor class. It's the first lesson. And what we do first is we do it in one color. And that emphasizes that although I love color, the color isn't as important as the values, the lights and darks, where the sun is hitting, what's not so important in the shadow, what's more important in the sun. So I make them do this the first week and often the next week then we do it in color. Um, so it's all planned, ready to go. Um, so I'm going to start with the sky. I've got my 140 pound arches rough paper. I've got my paints ready over here. They've been, I put new paint in everything um, and they've been sprayed so they're pretty nice and wet. I'm going to get some peacock blue for a nice sky. I don't want much happening in the sky. It's not important compared to the rest of the painting, but I, yeah, I do want some blue up there. Um, I'm also going to get ready a gray brown for my shadow everything. Everything here is in the shadow. It comes across here a little bit. This and where the building turns is also in the shadow. So I'm going to get those shadow colors ready. I'm going to use burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, French ultramarine. I'd like it to be kind of a gray, um, somewhere between the two of them. I'm also going to mix my bright color for this part of the building, which is going to be a combination of transparent yellow and opera to make it kind of an orange. Um, yeah, the buildings aren't really orange, but they're um, a buff color. I don't use uh, what I'm trying. Um, Paints that are not transparent, opaque paints. So I kind of like the brightness of the pinks and yellows together. First, I'm going to wet the sky. And like I said, we don't need a lot of detail up there. We just want to put some blue. My Paper is also at an angle, so when I come into the buildings, I can paint dry, but it'll blend down. So I just want a little bit of blue sky coming around my buildings. It's also going to
come down it's just fine um, this is dry now so as I come down there it's not going to do much and I'm going to put a little bit of foliage back there in the distance a little bit of a green with the blue sap green you mix it with a little of the blue a little yellow Ooh, too much yellow and we're just going to kind of give it some color back here to say there's things going on back there we're not concerned about them A little blue gives it a more feeling of a dis distant things going on. Okay, that's done. Almost. Just want to carve that out a little better. Okay, now I'm going to move over to my shadow areas. Got some green on there. It's okay because it's going to be dark. Take a little bigger brush. Um, I'm going to start up here there can be a little bit of color here where the uh, sun might hit the edges a little i'm going to come right into my browns and blues I have to remember it's going to dry quite 20 percent lighter so that's not quite dark enough and somehow i got into the purple and it won't come off my brush there we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, now that's nice and dark. I'm going to kind of leave some of this awning white. I go right over my windows, everything's in shadow. My door's in shadow, roof's in shadow. And I'm leaving the awning because I want a little light hitting there, not so much the inside of the awning as the outside. And just to keep it a little more interesting, you know, uh, uh, add, add color, color to it. That's not mixed as well. There's different things going on here. And I'm going to come around these bushes. Like I said, the doorway also is in shadow, as are the stairs. I also might like to use a little bit of nice orange. There's, you know, there can be something go on, going on in there. and. Somebody may be standing there, who knows? I'm gonna come into my greens here um, as if some of these, um, let me do this first, a little bit of more of a roof there. Um, I'm, gonna get a dark, I'm gonna get a dark green, dark, some dark, oh, dark sap and my light green. Again, this, these are in shadow out here, but we might, as it comes around, it might hit some light out here. So we'll leave some of that light. And this shadow area continues right on to the pavement, but it won't be quite as dark. So we want to have Some of this coming right in the sh shadow of this building. Right onto the pavement here. Kind of carve that out a little. Here's Um, grasses and whatnot coming down here. 
I'm also going to do this side of the building um, in shadow. Might be a little warmer shadow, a little browner, because it's a lighter building in general. And again, windows, everything. Shadow. The uh, side of this here, side of this brick wall is also in shadow. And make that stand out. Okay, I've got a large part of my painting painted. I'm going to switch now to the front of the building. I've got some of the browns and those oranges that are green. Is going to move that a little. So make that orange back up again with the yellow. Use this a little lighter. I don't want total orange, yeah, but it is. Okay. These awnings are the um, tiles. Got a lot of those here on Marco. And again, I'm changing my color a little from here to there. It's not a flat, um, it's a stone building, so there's a lot of things happening in the stone. And because I'm painting this, my paint's quite wet, I can kind of crisscross my, and it just kind of flows down. And even if it does leave some watermarks or some different textures going on, that's okay. I kind of like texture. It's a good thing for stone buildings especially, which are much more interesting to paint than skyscrapers. Modern, my opinion. Okay, as you can see, we're coming along quite quickly here. Like I said, drawing it takes probably longer than painting it. Um, I'm going to put some oranges and some browns up here too. It's also on the shadow side, but. Still like to have a little bit of the light in there. Okay, so at this stage, it kind of looks like a mess. It's okay. Um, but I've got most of my page covered. And I think I will let it dry just a little bit and then come back and do um, more detail and show you some of the rest of it. So I'll let it dry for... Well, I'll probably use the hair dryer, so it won't be very long. And I don't have a lot of different colors mixing, which the hair dryer would kind of make less um, happening. So this one, I'm going to use the hair dryer on. Okay. okay, I'm back. It's dry. I used the hair dryer, like I said. I'm going to start here. Well, I'm going to start with some of these bushes. I want to have some lights, some brights and lights in the bushes where the sun's hitting. So I'm going to start with my yellows, my pinks, do some of these bushes here. There's a, a plant here. It's lovely. I don't think it's in the actual photo. The joy of painting. You can make anything up. And we want some bright green in these guys here. 
they have a little bright because they're just catching the end of the sun here. I thought that one could use some orange too. And then I'm going to take my darker color. I'm going to use some, I think I'm going to use peacock and a little yellow for a green. Um, not quite dark enough. And darken these. So I got some nice bushes here. Um, over here, kind of the same thing. I'm going to carve out these stairs just a little. Have a nice plant here. I'm going to add some greens to those, but I'm going to let those dry so that the orange does stand out a little. Um, I have some windows here. I've kind of lost them in the dark, but that's okay. They might have shutters closed on them. I'm going to work into the roof here a little bit. Um, I'm looking up at this roof, so I'm seeing some of this and uh, the bottom of the tiles there. The same thing here. And I can just darken that a little if I want that building to be separated from the other building. And then I've got this awning. in the doorway. So maybe the doorway has a little um, you know where you look into the doorway it would work. I don't know. But it's going to be, we've got that orange in there, but most of it's going to be dark. Nice dark Under here, get a little more orange on there so it kind of blends together. And our, uh, I don't think it was quite dry there. Our awning, we're just gonna pretend the sun's hitting some of it out here a little bit. And not so much as it goes back. It is dark under here. And I'll come back and do some calligraphy on that in a little bit after it dries a little more. I'm going to come over here and do my rooftop, my window. Um, inside the door. What I'm going to do inside the door here is just suggest these 
railings a little bit. The stairs. I'm going to do some dark green. Here. Lighter green out here, where again the sun's hitting it. Okay, I'm gonna come up to these rooftops here. Uh, this one's going to be lighter. The sun's hitting it, I would think, a little more. Probably maybe both equally. Give it a little brown. Um, the little lines where the tiles. You don't have to do every one. Come quite a bit darker under here. And those parts of the roof are circular or, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean. What is it, Jim? That's circular. Tubes. So they're darker on the bottom, lighter on the top. And then the roof, same kind of thing happening where... Tiles are going that way, and then they go this way, following the same line as the roof. And we can come back in a little bit and do as much or as little of that as we want. We're going to come over here now into our doorway where we've got some... I'm going to do some detail here in this doorway. And then behind the grates, it's dark. I'll let that dry a minute. Um, our stairs just kind of suggest that they're there a little. Here also, so if I want to come back over here, it's still somewhat wet, but I can, if I use thick paint with very little water, I can come into that and work on it anyway. So I've got some lines here, dark paint, little water. Kind of comes in here too a little. And then we've got, we don't need them all. Over here we might also have some, if the shutters are closed, showing that a little bit. And underneath. Okay, as this is dry, so I can suggest brickwork on it. Again, just like the roofs, you don't want to put every line on, but you might say, well, this is stone. It's not brick, it's stone. And I can do some of those, change the color a little, um, all these different sizes and shapes. Okay, so I'm suggesting some of these stones here. Um, I have to put some more shadow here. And 
Stand up here a little bit. Turn on the edge a little. Okay, mix in some more orange. I want it to be a little more on the yellow side here. And when I'm doing some of these stones, might water them down a little here and there. I've got some windows over here, kind of a little bit more light there and here. And then we'll darken that inside. I've got this little planter here. This would be dark also or in shadow. So my white planter gets darker as it goes to the right where the sun's not hitting it. I'm going to try to get some nice bright green out here. And some... leaves here and there. Um, it's a planter here that dark here. Dark on the right, lighter as it goes onto the right side. A little dark underneath it. Have a uh, nice shadow under here, here. You don't want those two shadows to both be the same depth. So they're a little different. And the shadow is also coming from this building onto this building here a little bit. Could be a little browner. And across some of this awning and under here also would get a little darker. But we're going to get that whole thing darker down there, so that'll be good. So I want a little more texture in this building here, so I'm going to get a little blue-brown mix. And just boom, texture. And I'm going to add a window up here because I think it's kind of naked there. Let that dry a minute. I'm going to come over to this window, these little guys, little things going on here. That one, little chimney thing. Just gonna, might be a little shadow there. Um, this window, I'm just going to very lightly put some bars in it, a little darker than I wanted, so that I can go around them with a nice dark like I did here. Um, okay. Go for some darks along the awning here, back with darks along the roof, and it's drying as I'm doing all of this. So we've got the little uh, 
um, tiles, tile roof. And this shadow comes across here and into the doorway here. Nice dark around. And you don't have to be real careful with it. It's darker where the shadow get a little lighter as we go down. So we have some nice bars on there. Nice dark here defining this roof shape. And the same up here. At least in the beginning there. Uh, we want to do a little bit of that here also on this side, a little bit, as these come down. Again, we don't have to do them all. Uh, we have a drain pipe here. Oh. These windows here, darker in the inside. as is this door. Might have a... Here we might have some Stones also. And a shadow here coming from that, from the wall here. Do that window. Now put a window over here. Definition there. And maybe some stonework here. Give it a little more definition. A little boring over here. Just give a little more green in there. So I'm just looking around now for things that need to pop it up a little bit here and there. 
Maybe those trees are a little closer than I thought they were in the first place. Or maybe they moved, you know. If I put some darks here, it'll bring that out a little better too. Also, the other thing is this is dark over there. As it goes around from the sun, um, the dark here be a little, a little darker there, leaving some sunlight out there. Then as it just comes around the side here, it gets dark again. Just a little more detail in the little uh, base there. That was kind of a bright blue. Oh, that's because it's purple. And I don't think I have to do a whole lot more to it. It's a quick watercolor. It's a lot of detail, but as you saw, you do the big areas. As it dries, you come back with little calligraphies and brights and other things that you want to do with it. Um, so um, when I did it as a half sheet, it had more detail. But it's, it's not bad for a quick little watercolor. Thank you for watching, and um, please tell your friends it's at the Brush and Lens on YouTube, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope to do more for you. Thank you.